what's up tribe how you guys doing this is gonna be your video for love is season one episode nine next week is the season finale but it has already been picked up for season two so that's good news because then we don't have to worry about it we don't because like in contempt i haven't heard anything about whether in contempt has been picked up y'all let me know if y'all have or not um but go ahead and hit that subscribe video and <clears throat> um subscribe button and i hope you like this video so the episode opens up with miss angela honey well, well, it opens up with the writers in the writers' room acting a daggone fool, playing um, the 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 Nerf uh, gun thing, and they and Nori is trying to read one of um, Yasir's um, um, playwright, screenwriter, screen y'all know some screenplays. Lord, then we see Miss Angela coming down the hallway looking like a million bucks, honey. She done got the braids out, her head and pressed out. It's down to her shoulders. She got on this white, this real nice white suit, honey. Makeup looking good. She's looking like a million bucks, right? They even got the little fan thing working with her hair. It's flowing. Looking good, girl. Looking good. And so, she comes in and, of course, everybody is like, er? Like, what's going on? You know? And she was like, what? Like, girl, you know you look good. You know you came in here looking crazy. Don't act like you don't know why they tripping. And they were like, what's going on? Like, you, you got church tonight? Like, you, somebody died? You got a date? Nori was like, what's going on? Like, you could tell me, girl. And she's, you know, of course, she's just giving Nori the, the little smile or whatever. She was like, Nori, you know, and then Nori hit her with the girl code. Do you have to use the bathroom? That's girl code for let's go talk. And she was like, no, nah, I'm good. Shady bitch. You should have went and told Nori what was up. But anyway. 10 seconds later, and they were like, what's up? Because they were like, Angela, you are never late, and you are late. Like, what's good? 10 seconds later, here come Norman coming in with his little Sunday suit on, looking all sharp, looking like a million bucks himself. And he tells them, he said, look, I just came back from a meeting where I just sold, and then she's, Angela, looking at him crazy. He was like, Angela and I just sold a drama he said, you know, it ain't a whole lot right now, but just know that we, you know, that we sold the show. And y'all know selling the show and the show getting picked up is a long process. But in the meantime, you know, it's looking good. So, Nori looks at Angela. Angela kind of gives Nori like a little, um, a guilty look. And at first, I thought Angela was going to, I mean, I thought Nori was going to trip. I really did. I thought Nori was going to be like she did about the whole script situation. And she was going to be on her little jealous thing. And she was going to really trip out. But it ends up actually being a blessing for for Nori. And she goes home to hurry up and tell Yasir. Now, Yasir done hooked up his little writing room. Remember last episode, she gave him the little alcove area to be for his writing room. He done pulled some furniture out of the garage. He done rearranged some stuff. And he created a nice little space. He's got the, the, the jazz playing in the background. And it's a real nice space, you know. And she's like, you'll never guess what happened today. And he's like, what? You know, and she says, look, she said, Norman and Angela sold, um, they sold a pilot. But in the meantime and in between time, he needs somebody to finish up that script that Angela never really finished. So now it is my script and I get to basically, she has to rewrite the pig script. But she was like, but it's mine. It's going to be mine. It's going to have my name on it. And so I was surprised because she was excited about that. She didn't even seem to be tripping over the fact that she was sort of not a part of that whole process. She was excited about her opportunity, which was good. Because I know sometimes Nori can get in her head a little bit. So that was really good for her. And, you know, Yasir was, was, was very excited. And she was like, can you believe it? And he said, yeah, I can. And he said, let me show you something. And he takes out a little box. Um, he said, this is my prayer box. He opens it up and he pulls out a piece of paper. He says, read it. And in on that piece of paper is his prayer for Nori to get her script, to get her her, her, pot, her script done. So he said, you know, like I told you before, what's for you is for you. I said, you better tell it. You better tell it, you see. Even though you see it pissed me off in this episode. But when that, for that moment, I was with him. So basically, he goes out and gets some champagne. Well, he gets some sparkling cider for him and some champagne for Nori. And they celebrate. They do a toast and everything. Next thing you know, so, you know, Yuri's like, look, let's, um, you know, you stay out here and work. I'm going to go in my office and work because I got to get the script done. I got, you know, I only have 24 hours to do the script. So he starts kissing all on her. And she's like, look, 
Now, you already know that if we get started, we ain't going to stop. He was like, well, all right, you right, you right. He was like, she said, well, maybe a quickie. He said, you know we don't do nothing quick. She was like, come on, come on, we can just do a little quickie. Next thing you know, they had a, they didn't have sex all damn night. So Noria's like, look, I got to get this done. She was like, let me go to the office because if I stay here, neither one of us are going to concentrate and we're going to end up, because they it, this happened, it showed them a couple of times, have sex and then say, okay, now let's get some work done. Have sex, okay, let's get some work done. So finally she was like, I'm going to just go into the office because at least there I can concentrate and I know I'm going to get this done. He said, okay, you know, you go ahead. He was like, I'm a little worried about you leaving because it's nighttime. You know, he said, make sure you call me when you get there. I knew then she wasn't going to call. She gets to the office and, of course, she doesn't call. She starts working and she they show her in the writing room her purse is in her office with the, his page, with the pager going off. Again, every time I see that throwback to the 90s, I crack up because I remember them days, y'all. I told y'all before... For my young people listening, you call somebody and they were, you just didn't get nobody. And you had to page them and then wait for them to page you back. Honey. So he's paging her, paging her, paging her now. I know he got her work number. I don't know why he didn't call the number, but he, whatever. And, of course, she never called him back. So he's he, you can see he's pissed off. He's irritated. She comes home, you know, and she's all excited because she's like, I finished my script, you know. He lays there like he sleep, but he really not. He but he's pissed off. So the next day, you know, he lets her know how pissed off he was. He was like, you know, all I asked you to do was one thing. I just asked you to call me so I know that you got there safely. But instead, you had me worried about you all night, and you don't seem to think it's a problem with that. And her thing was, I'm sorry. Like all I can do is apologize. She said I got caught up. You know, I was trying to get the script done. He said I know your work. He was like, your job always seems to be more important than what I need you to do. Now, how he made that leap, I don't know. Because I feel like your seer is very much a priority. I understand being upset because you were probably worried. Like your parents, when you don't call and you come in late, your parents are more worried than they are pissed off. But it comes off as them being pissed off. So I got that part of it. So they get to talking about it. And Nori is like, you know, Nori is like, look, I apologize. There's nothing more I can do. Like you still pissed off. And he was like, no, nah, I ain't pissed. I ain't mad. He was like, you know, I just know where I stand. I just know where I stand. So, like I said, you see her on that bullshit. She ends up getting him, you know, she, you know, she did what women do. She put on some lingerie and seduced him. And they kind of were okay, you know. She run late for work after this because, you know, she already, she really ain't had time to do it, but she didn't want to leave the house with them being mad. So, she gets to the table read. She's running late, but she wasn't late enough that no anybody really noticed. But she gets there, and the table read goes really well. Like, she is really excited. And so she tells him, she's like, look, um, she tells Yasir, I want you to come to the taping. You know, she was like, it's, it's my night. I really want you to be at the taping. And he was like, nah. He was like, you know, that's your night. I don't need to be there. And she was like, no, Yasir. I want you to be there to share with me. Like, it's a special night for me. I really need you to be there. She said, as a matter of fact, bring your script because I want you to, um, I want you to, my, my agent will be there and I can give you the agent, give, give my agent your script. And he was like, no, I'm not doing that. That is your night. I am not going to use your night as an opportunity to try to get in. And she was like, you see her. It is my night and this is how I want to use it. Now, I see both both sides of that coin. I definitely understand. I understand why Yusir doesn't want to bring the script. I don't understand why Yusir doesn't want to come to the taping. I understand why Nori wants to try to help Yusir. I don't think that that night is the appropriate time to do it. You set up a separate meeting with your attorney. I mean, with your agent. Take her out, to, him or her out to lunch. Yet you let Yusir come, introduce them, and in, you know, over lunch or something like that, and then give him the script. But I don't think that was the opportunity for all that to happen. Take your night and enjoy your night. But whatever. Um, and then you see it's like, well, did you even finish reading the script? And she was like, look, I'm almost done. Like, I'm in, I'm in, you know. He was like, Nori, see, that's what I'm talking about. You always busy doing everything else except for what I need you to do. Again, you on that bullshit, you see her. You are on that bullshit because, like I keep saying, I think that she makes you very much a priority. So all of that... You just ain't no. She very much makes you a priority. In the meantime, in the between time, you see her get some bad luck. They're cutting the hours back at work. Now we and we again we're starting to see some of the negative things that went on in the nineties. People aren't reading books. People are starting to 
go online now. Um, it's definitely not what it is today, but people are starting to go online and get their information. Um, and so this is what we're seeing. And um, so his hours are being cut at work. Now, luckily for him, they ain't fire him. And like his boss told him, his boss was like, well, you know, the only reason why I'm not really, he was like, you know, because, you know, last hire, first fire. He said, the only reason why I'm really not firing you is because you actually read the books and you can talk to the, the customers in an intelligent way about the books. He was like, but I really need, to, I'm going to have to cut your hours. Like, I, I can't afford to keep you. F he was like, I'm barely making 30 hours as it is. He was like, so they're going to cut his hours down to like 20 hours a week, which that's harsh. He was like, that's barely even two full days. He was like, well, we can stretch it out to four half days. You know, his boss was really trying to keep it like real positive. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't. It's, it's just, there's no really positive way to slice that. Like, it's going to be a messed up situation. So, with all that being said, Nori convinces, well, no, Nori doesn't convince um, Yasir to come to her um, her table reading. Yasir, um, Yasir's friend does. Y'all know Sean. I like Sean. Because Sean be getting Yasir together. So, here's the thing. Yasir is irritated because, one, I think there's a little bit of jealousy. He's happy for Nori, but jealous at the same time. And sometimes you have friends that are doing well. You're happy for them as a friend. But then there's a, there is a piece of jealousy involved because they're, especially the fact that they want to do the same thing. And But the problem is, you see, and, Je and Nori, they didn't start off at the same place, the starting line. Like, Nori was already a couple of um, yards ahead of him because she already had a job in writing. But I do think that, I don't think he wants to be jealous. I just think that, unfortunately, that's how it was. The night that she came home after the table reading, she tells him how great it went, how good everything was, and she was like, I gotta go to bed. I'm tired. Well, she tired because y'all had spent the last three days having sex. And then she had to stay up all night to finish that script. So, yeah, she tired. But he had cooked dinner for her and had gotten her some flowers and stuff, and, of course, she never even saw it. So, again, he was in his little feelings because he was like, you know, she, ain't, I, I cooked dinner and she didn't even see. He's talking to his friend, Sean. And Sean was like, man, look, he said, so why you, why don't, you know, I understand that, you know, she didn't see that you cooked dinner and all that other stuff. He was like, but she did invite you to come to her show. Like, why are you not going? Because that's her night, man. I'm not trying to be there for that. And he was like, okay, it's her night, but she wants you to be there. Like, she asked you to be there. So then he's, you know, you see it start doing his, you see his shit and start giving up all these bullshit reasons you know why he don't need to be there and Sean was like look you can sit here and try to convince yourself all you want that this isn't where you're supposed to be but at the end of the day you need to have your ass at that taping you need to be there for her so Sean is like um he said and you need to go ahead and take that script he was like if she's offering you need to take advantage of the op you know opportunities he was like you know, everybody don't have an inside scoop. You need to take advantage where you can to get what you're trying to get. And he was like, nah, you know, I, I've, I've already, she's already done too much for me. I can't keep eating off of her. People will never think I earned it on my own. He was like, people ain't going to never think you earned it on your own, whether you did or you didn't. He was like, and since when did you start caring about what other people think about you? And he, let me tell you something, I like Sean, because Sean ain't said nothing but the truth. Sean was like, look, it don't matter how it happened. People going to always hate on your success, so... Get it when you fit it. Because here's the thing. I'm about to go left for a minute. Other people do it. And I don't know why some people get so caught up in, nah, I got to take the hard way. I got to go the hard way. Nah, nah, nah. No, dude. If you have an opportunity and somebody got an inside scoop and somebody's willing to help you get on, you better sh take advantage of it. Because here's the thing. One thing for sure and two things for certain. If you don't have the talent to maintain, you won't keep it. You won't keep it. But don't ever look at an opportunity in a bad way because you don't know where that blessing is coming from or how that blessing is coming. Don't block your blessings on no bullshit. So anyway, so you see it the size of go. Sean told him, he said, go put on that one nice suit you got and take your ass up there. And you see it does. He put on that same suit he wore the night of the... Um, of the Wynton Marsalis uh, concert. So he's at the security check booth. And his name's not on the list. Well his name is not on the list. Because he gave them his new. Um, I mean she gave, he gave them. His 
government name because he had to show ID. So his driver's license still has his government name on it, not his new name where since he's converted and he's taken on the name of Yasir, I think his last name is Diallo, something like that. So he getting mad at the security guard because the security guard is like, your name ain't on the list. Your name ain't on the list. And he was like, oh, man. He was like, you know what? It's probably um, on the list um, as my Muslim name because she doesn't know my, my government name. And the security guard was like, I'm sorry, sir. I have to go by what's on the list. Like, your name's not on the list. Well, at the same time, old boy, remember the dude that Yuri used to sleep with? The... um production assistant, the guy that goes to get lunches, he pulls up with a list. And he says, you know, this is an updated list or whatever. Now, this is the part I wasn't clear about. I wasn't clear if the security guard let you see it through because the production assistant came through and knew who he was. Or if Yuri had put his government name on that new list that the guy handed him. I wasn't quite sure how that went down. But neither here nor there. Uh, Yasir and the production I forget the boy's name they end up having a few words he was like ain't you the person that get the that get the lunches now Yasir I know you want to throw some shade but that probably wasn't the time to throw some shade cause he could have you know like he inside you trying to get in whether he buying the lunches or not you ain't in your name ain't on the list but they end up giving it, they end, um, and he was like, um, oh, so you the boyfriend? Mm. You know, they have their little macho man moment. So, um, Yuri, I'm sorry, so Nasir ends up getting a pass. But now, because his name isn't on the list, he can't park in the regular parking lot. He has to park in the overflow parking, which means that he had to walk all the way across the, um, West Timbuktu, and he ended up being late. Well, when they're taping a show, once the red light comes on and they're taping, nobody can come in or out until there's a break in the show. You know, that scene is over or whatever. So, you see it gets there, and security guard, now mind you, the security guard was being an asshole. You know, some people take their job real seriously. He was being an asshole, but you see it was being an asshole too. Dude was like, your name ain't on the list. And Yasir was like, man, come on, stop playing. Like, what are you doing? He was like, your name's not on the list. He was like, Nori, my, that's my girlfriend. He was like, oh, you know Nori? He was like, yeah, that's my girlfriend. He was like, oh, well, you can't go in. He said, your name ain't on the list, sir. He was like, and I can't let you in because the red light's on. He said, if the red light's on, ain't nobody going in. He said, so you're going to have to wait. Instead of your ass just waiting... You get nasty. Because he, oh, he called you son. That's what it was. He was like, I'm not your son. So the security guard responded and called him son again. Now on the inside, Nori looking real good. She got her head slicked back. She got on her business woman suit. You know what I'm saying? And Norman tells her, come on up here and sit with me. Up in the big box. Up in the big the big chair. She was like, oh. So she's up there sitting with Norman. One of the, um... I don't know who he was, but some dude with headset, he comes to talk to her, and he basically tells her, there's a situation outside you need to handle. Norman must have heard what the dude said. Norman was like, no, that sounds like a, a serious situation. He was like, this is your night. Don't don't let this screw this up. Like, don't let yourself get sidetracked. This is your night. She ends up missing in her call where they called her name as one of the writers for the show and get, um, get, um, to come down, her and Angela, they get them called down, and instead of her going down and getting her, her applause, she goes outside to see what's going on with um, Yasir. Yasir gets pissed off because he was like, oh, so you were too busy to put my name on the list? And she was like, excuse me? He was like, you know, all I asked you to do was one thing. I asked for one thing, and you too busy to put your name on, to, to um, take care of me. You know, you always got time for everybody else except for me. And when she came out there, the security guy, as soon as she came out there, the security guard was like, oh, you do know him? And I think they would have let him back in had you said just shut the fuck up. But nah, they get to arguing. You see, it gets nasty, and, and she, I mean, he's embarrassing her. Like, he's talking to her crazy in front of the security guard, so you already know that I mean. Everybody and their cousin going to find out about it. And security guard was like, you know what, this ain't got nothing to do with me. And he steps back. The two of them get to arguing. And you see his talk, like I said, he is talking to her real crazy. Oh, so you, all I asked you to do was one thing, but you didn't have time to do, take care of that for me. All you had to do was put my name on the list, and you didn't have time to put my name on the list. I was like, you know what, you see is really getting on my goddamn nerves. 
So then you see it starts bringing up all the other stuff. He go back to her not calling, talking about something. You just break your mother, never promised to me, just like you did the other night, but you promised to call. So, once again, he bringing up old shit from before. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to say, y'all. I forgot to say that part. When they had the argument about her not calling, he brought up the fact that he had friends who had been raped and how it's a really serious thing for him because he's had, you know, friends that have been assaulted and raped and stuff and that, you know, he was worried about her. So, I had to bring that up because um, that's a part. Um, but, yeah, so he's talking about, you know what, I told you this was your night. And she was like, yeah, that I wanted to share with you. He was like, oh, that's why my name not on the list. Like, did you just bring me here so you could parade me around all your exes and stuff? I mean, it was, he got really nasty. He got really nasty. And then he ends up walking off. So she turns around to go back into the studio. The red light's back on. She can't get in for her own damn show. She couldn't get in until there was another break. So, Norman ends up ripping her a new one. Like, when it's all over said and done, it's just her and Norman sitting there. And Norman tells her, he's like, look, I don't know what the deal is with you and old boy, but you really doing a lot for him. He was like, you know, this was supposed to be, like, this was your night. This was supposed to be it for you. You were supposed to be happy. He said, and you missed half the show. She was like, I, I, you know, she was like, I got back in, you know, I was here. He was like, yeah, and then your ass was moping and looking mad, looking mad and sad the rest of the night. He was like, this is your night. He said, and I don't know what this dude is doing. He said, but you're doing a whole lot for him. He said, then I heard he showed up with a script in his hand, like he was trying to um, panhandle or something. And she was like, I told him to do that. That was me. He said, you know, Nori, I hope you know what you're doing. And she said, I do. He said, nope. He said, you, he said, you answered too fast because you're not listening to me. He was like, I hope you understand what you are doing. He said, because you are going to end up missing out, messing with him. He was like, I heard he broke. I heard, like, because, like, again, people done gossiped about this. People are talking about her. So it then got back to Norman, your boss. You should be embarrassed that, the, that Norman knows this much about your personal life. And he's telling her, he's like, look, you are my Padawan. Like, you are talented. I see it all in you. He's like, but you're going to mess it up. You're going to mess it up by continuing to allow your personal life to get involved in your in professional. And then he's like, and then he's like, you know what? But you got it all figured out. I'm done. I said my piece. He said, but please understand that this time I'm coming at you as a friend next time I'm coming at you as your boss and he leaves her there to think the lights going out all around her and she's crying and she's all upset so she goes home and she's like so you're not even going to apologize and he was like apologize for what she was like you embarrassed the shit out of me in front of my colleagues and my job he said, well, he said, Yuri, he was like, I can't believe, you know, you had me out there looking crazy. You didn't even remember to put my name on the list. She said it was a typo. She said, and Big John can barely read, but you didn't give nobody a chance to figure it out. You didn't give me time to fix it before you went off, Big John's security guard. So you see it was on the list. It was just misspelled on the list. And before she could even get a chance to look at the list and get it all cleared up. Because like I said, as soon as Big John, the security guard, knew that she knew him, he was going to let them in. But he was just doing his job, overzealously doing his job. So, you know, Nuri is like, you know what? She said, I've done so much for you. And this was my night, and you ruined it for me. You ruined it for me. And she said, you know what? Maybe we just need to take a step back because love ain't supposed to be this hard. Honey, I understand. Been there and done that, girl. Been there and done that. She said, love ain't supposed to be this hard. And so, of course, he was like, oh, so now that's what you want to do? You want to do that to us? No, you see, you did that to yourself over your hot head. See, you was already in your feelings when you got there. You was already feeling some kind of way. And every little thing that happened set you off. And instead of just apologizing and throwing yourself at the mercy of her feet, you still got an attitude and you still acting like you didn't do nothing wrong. So they end up going to sleep. He wakes up and he starts doing what men do, you know. He starts kissing on her, rubbing on her leg, talking about, you know, um, Yuri, I just think things got a little out of control last night. Yuri wakes up and flips out. 
she wakes up and she flips out. And this, the way this scene was taped, this scene was taped so beautiful because she jumps out of the bed, she runs and she's hiding. And she's like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. And she is crying. Like, she is losing it. She is hysterical on the floor. She is crying. She is hysterical. And the way they taped it, they show Yasir, but they show him blurred. Like, they don't show him clear. To the point where, at one point, I was like, shit, is that Yasir? Like, maybe it is somebody in her house that ain't supposed to be there. But she is crouched in the corner, and she is crying. I mean, she is... She is, t I mean, it, it hurt my heart. It hurt my heart. She did this thing. And the way, like I said, the way they filmed it, you see it's like, Nori, Nori, it's me. Nori, baby, Nori, Nori. He never says you see it, but he's like, it's not. and like I said, the whole time he's walking towards her, but he's walking very slowly towards her, and he's blurred. He doesn't come into focus until he is sitting, like, right next to her. And she is crying, and she is bawling, and he's like, Nori. He's like, I'm here. I got you. I got you. I'm here. I got you. And she just balls. Oh my god! It was. It was. It was. It was done so well. It hits you so so hard, but it broke your heart at the same time. Oh my gosh, she was balling. Oh my gosh, she was balling. And so, you could tell they laid there for a long time. They laid there for a long time because I think that was more than time. And by the time they showed them again, it's night. And. She says, you know, I guess this is something I should tell you. And he's like, you know, you can tell me anything, like whatever it is, you know, you can tell me anything. She said, from the age of nine to the age of 12, I was molested by my stepfather. She said he would come into my room and he would, you know, take advantage of me. And this went on for, you know, went on for three years. And he looked at her and he said, Nori, we have more in common than you think. Oh, what he do that for? I said, man, man, oh, man, oh, man. And then he's crying and then she's crying and they are just, they are just embracing, they're just together. Like, it just... It strengthened their bond. Like, it almost... Well, not almost. It, it made you forget about all that other bullshit. Like, I was still mad at Yasir for the way he acted. But in that moment, at that... Like, it was so much... It was just bigger than all of that. It was bigger than all of that. And the fact that they shared that... That he had been molested as well. And that he shared that with her. Because, you know, a lot of times, guys are not that quick to share that type of stuff. But the fact that he was like, you know, we got more in common than you think. And he shared that. Oh, man, that thing broke my heart. Oh, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. It broke my heart. But, again, it was so well done. It was so well done. So, next week is the season finale, y'all. Y'all let me know how y'all think, what y'all think about that episode. It was so good. It was so, so good. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.